omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Espírito Santo. Latin was dropped for, quite honestly, sometimes ideological reasons because perhaps people associated it with a certain kind of rigidity in the church. The church wasn't flexible and needed to be updated. There's truth to that. I have sympathy to, for that, and I think many others do. I mean, that the church really needed to um, connect to, to the world. But I think the changes happened so fast that people didn't realize what was being tossed out, and that now we are I think experiencing and feeling, and even young people are, are, are experiencing a dryness of not being able to connect to what preceded us. People say, well, why, why read Shakespeare? Uh, English has changed so much. Well, when we read Shakespeare today, we're captured by the beauty of it, and also just to think that this is the language that's in the same family tree as our own, and that people are watching this on stage and laughing and crying, in the same way that we can laugh and cry today. And that, I think what that amounts to is to be human. And so to understand the history, not only of the church, but of the West, it's been written in Latin and handed on in Latin. And when we are using the Latin actively, we put ourselves into a whole family of tradition in that way. There are people who are attracted to the traditional Mass or to the Novus Ordo in Latin because they perceive something beautiful about this language, even though they don't understand it. We think of the phenomenon now of what's called world music, people basically buying albums by contemporary, maybe pop artists in India or South Africa or Latin America, and maybe not even understanding the language that they're singing, perceiving something really beautiful about it. I think that could be applied to the liturgy as well. And I think that the language, the Latin language, does communicate in that way where even if you're not able to give a good translation of what's being prayed by the priest or even what maybe you're praying at a certain point in the liturgy, the stirrings in the heart are already working because the consonants, the assonance, the rhythm, the meter is captivating and beautiful. Pope Benedict XVI and his predecessors have had this interest in promoting uh, Latinity, and they have uh, taken upon themselves various initiatives to do so. And it may be time in today's world and the church in seeing this flourishing of interest in Latin throughout the world to somehow reorganize ourselves in the Roman Curia to assist people to appreciate the language, to learn it, and to help seminarians, religious, and lay people who are going to be specializing in philosophical and theological studies to get the background they need in the language. And that is what's behind the current discussion in the church of which initiatives to take to promote the Latin languages. Those, which, those things that have even been in the news recently about the Latin Academy and perhaps other initiatives are all geared toward trying to assess what's going on today and handing on the language in the best way possible. <laughs>